And so the first night I, I walked into a strip club, which is how I entered the commercial sex industry under the control of a pimp. I had never been in a strip club before, and yet there was something very familiar about the environment because my history of childhood sexual abuse had prepared me and groomed me in a sense to be comfortable with being objectified and sexualized, for sex and sexuality to be very transactional. The question of why doesn't a person just leave is, it's the biggest question. And I think it's also, it's very deeply connected to the question of, is it her choice? Often when it comes to exploitation, I, there's an interplay of vulnerability and environmental factors. Up to 90% of women in the commercial sex industry have histories of sexual abuse. That is not a coincidence. Obviously not everyone who's sexually abused go on, goes on to be in the commercial sex industry, but the reality is that a large majority of people in the commercial sex industry share this history. The thing with sexual abuse, childhood sexual abuse, is it really erodes a person of their boundaries. As a survivor of childhood sexual abuse, I can tell you that my no was taken from me. I didn't have the option of no. I, um, my, my personal boundaries were eroded. And then you have you know, the issues of finances. And when you take a person who has come from a history of abuse, who maybe doesn't have employable job skills or an education, maybe they came from poverty, they don't have any other way to make ends meet. And this suddenly feels like the only way to survive. And it makes it very difficult to leave. On top of that, you have the issue of the way the commercial sex industry and, and pornography impacts your identity. There is this sense that you're, you're forever marked and changed and that you can't get out and live some kind of normal life. Um, and with porn specifically, some of the barriers are many of the women that we serve, you know, they're wanting to go and go on job interviews and they're in situations where literally people will say, oh, I, re I recognize you from your videos. I've seen you. And then now it's going around the workplace that, oh, this person was in porn. And then unfortunately, there are a lot of people out there who have really predatory mindsets and, you know, would see someone who maybe has that history as like an easy mark for re-victimization. But it's just very unfortunate that, you know, people will interact with you based on who they think you are because of this, you know, part, piece of your life and piece of your experiences.